Audiences don't know somebody sits down and writes a picture. They think the actors make it up as they go along. On the WGA's list of the 101 greatest screenplays, four of them are movies by Billy Wilder. Double Indemnity, The Apartment, Some Like It Hot, and this masterclass in screenwriting that won an Oscar in 1951 for Best Screenplay. Here are 10 screenwriting secrets in Sunset Boulevard. In Sunset Boulevard, just as in real life, there's an underlying theme. Be careful what you wish for. Let's see how the characters get what they want, only to pay a terrible price. I'm over a barrel. I need a job. I haven't got a thing. I want you to do this work. Me? Look, I'm supposed to fix up your script. There's nothing in the deal about my staying here. You'll like it here. I just want to work again. You don't know what it means to know that you want me. Joe! The cameras have arrived. They have. Tell Mr. DeMille I'll be on the set at once. I don't want to be a reader all my life. I want to write. I'm sorry if I crossed you up. You sure have. I'm not in love with him anymore, that's all. What happened? You did? Look, sweetie, be practical. I've got a good deal here. A long-term contract with no options. I made her a star, and I cannot let her be destroyed. No one ever leaves a star. That's what makes one a star. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. It's one of my favorite themes in screenwriting and it's a powerful tool to push your story into the second act. Story is king, so be sure to have everything in your screenplay serve the story. When it comes to Sunset Boulevard, they do just this. First, let's start with objects. Notice how these objects support the story by giving us even more insight into Norma's character. It had a 1932 license. I figured that's when the owners had moved out. The great Norma Desmond. How could she breathe in that house so crowded with Norma Desmonds? I felt caught like the cigarette in that contraption on her finger. Next, we have locations. Don't these locations give us insight into Norma Desmond's life? It was a great big white elephant of a place. The kind crazy movie people built in the crazy 20s. The perfect setting for a silent movie queen, still waving proudly to a parade which had long since passed her by. There was a tennis court, or rather the ghost of a tennis court. And of course she had a pool. Mabel Norman and John Gilbert must have swum in it 10,000 midnights ago. And doesn't this give us an insight into the relationship of Joe and Betty? Look at this street. All cardboard, all hollow, all phony, all done with mirrors. Let's also not forget about the weather, and how that can also drive the story. It came right through the old roof of my room above the garage. She had Max move me to the main house. When it comes to a screenplay, all we really want is the story. So be sure to make everything that's in the script serve the story itself. If we're going to talk about a Billy Wilder film, we need to talk about the characters. Billy Wilder's screenplays work outstandingly well because they clearly answer important questions about the characters. For example, what do they want more than anything? Well, I needed about $290. I needed it real quick or I'd lose my car. Look, uh, Mr. Sheldrake, could you let me have 300 bucks yourself as a personal loan? What do you think I've been doing? I need $300. I've waited 20 years for this call. We'll be working again, won't we, Chief? We'll make our greatest picture. Yeah, that's what I want to talk to you it's about. It's a good script, isn't it? She was absolutely determined to be ready. Ready for those cameras that would never turn. I'd kind of hope to get in on this deal. 
I don't want to be a reader all my life. I want to write. Couldn't we work in the evenings? Six o'clock in the morning. This next month, I'm completely at your disposal. Here's another question. What's their main problem? Only now we want you to believe us. That car better be back here by noon tomorrow. There's going to be fireworks. Used to be in silent pictures. Used to be big. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. What happens when she finds out? She never will. That is my job. And it has been for a long time. You're getting married. That's what you wanted. I don't want it now. Why not? Don't you love Artie? And another one. What's their emotional shield? I just think that pictures should say a little something. Oh, one of the message kids. Just a story won't do. I'd always heard that you had some talent. That was last year. This year I'm trying to earn a living. December, 21st. Sagittarius. I like Sagittarians. You can trust them. Demille is Leo. I'm Scorpio. Mars has been transiting Jupiter for weeks. Today is the day of the greatest conjunction. And she's turned you into a servant. I could have continued my career. Only I found everything unendurable after she'd left me. So if you want to avoid having flat characters in your story, take a cue from Billy Wilder here. Make your characters more complex and human by thinking about these questions. To fix the problem of having scenes that go off course, try to think about how they fit into sequences. Sequences are a string of several scenes that form a cohesive narrative form. They follow their own basic story structure. Let's look at examples of sequences in Sunset Boulevard. Notice how they're each composed of several scenes. Look, uh, Mr. Sheldrake, could you let me have 300 bucks yourself as a personal loan? I got myself 10 nickels and started sending out a general SOS. Now you'll have to sit behind the typewriter. Now you'll have to write. What do you think I've been doing? I need $300. A great big empty garage, just standing there going to waste. Just a minute, you. You're a writer, you said. Why? Are you or aren't you? Well, pack him up again. I didn't say I was staying. Suppose you make up your mind. Do you want this job or don't you? What right do you have to take me for granted? What right? You want me to tell you? I just had to get out of there. I had to be with people my own age. Uh, can I stick around here for a while? Oh, sure. This will go on all night. No, I mean, uh, can you put me up for a couple of weeks? Madame got the razor from your room and she cut her wrists. What? <laughs> Max! Max! Happy New Year, darling. I'm sorry to bother you again, but I've confirmed the number. I must speak to Mr. Gillis. He's not here. Now, if we could sit down for two weeks to get a story. I'm sorry, Miss Schaefer. I've given up writing on spec. But I tell you, this is half sold. Couldn't we work in the evenings? Six o'clock in the morning. This next month, I'm completely at your disposal. I, I will now kiss that nose of yours. If you please. You're getting married. That's what you wanted. I don't want it now. What happened? Sequences are a powerful way to help straighten out your screenplay and keep your scenes on track in the story. We all know that an excellent way to reveal character is through action. However, if the action taken is the result of a crucial choice, or better yet, a dilemma, then true character is revealed more powerfully. Look at all of the character-defining choices that are made in Sunset Boulevard. Well, pack him up again. I didn't say I was staying. Suppose you make up your mind. Do you want this job or don't you? Well, as long as the lady's paying for it, why not take the vacuuma? Why don't you just say thank you and go? Go, go! Not until you promise to act like a sensible human being. Now, if we could sit down for two weeks to get a story... I'm sorry, Miss Schaefer. I've given up writing on spec. But I tell you, this is half sold. As a matter of fact, I've given up writing altogether. How old are you, anyway? Twenty-two. And may I suggest that if we're ever to finish this story, you stay at least two feet away from me. Where are you? What is this all about? Well, better yet, why don't you come out and see for yourself? I'll get your things together and let's get out of here. Come on, where? 
Back to a one-room apartment I can't pay for? Back to a story that may sell and very possibly will not? Great actors look for difficult choices that are made by characters in a screenplay. Give them what they want, and you'll also write a better story. The midpoint of a screenplay is an important sequence in which several things are accomplished. Let's see what Billy Wilder gives us in the midpoint sequence of Sunset Boulevard. First, we have the unveiling of a character. It was at her New Year's party that I found out how she felt about me. Maybe I'd been an idiot not to have sensed it was coming. What is this, mink? Judas H. Priest. Stakes are raised. One of them being this is New Year's Eve. How about living it up a little? As for instance? Well, Madame got the razor from your room and she cut her wrists. What? <laughs> Max! Max! And finally, characters usually put aside their differences and forge a relationship. You'll be waiting for me. With a wildly beating heart. Life can be beautiful. In the case of Joe's relationship with Norma, he makes a crucial choice that changes the course of the second half of the story. This also brings him to a point of no return. Why don't you just say thank you and go? Go, go! I'll do it again. I'll do it again. <laughs> Happy New Year, Norma. So don't underestimate the importance of the midpoint. It's a crucial sequence that will shape the second half of your story and propel the action to a satisfying resolution. If you want real conflict in your scenes, it's best accomplished by having characters with opposing goals in those scenes. And the audience connects more easily to the story when the character's goals are clear and visible. Don't make us have to guess what a character wants. Look at how we get natural conflict in these scenes because of the opposing goals. Joseph C. Gellis? That's right. We've come for the car. I loaned it to a friend of mine. He took it down to Palm Springs. Oh, had to get away for his health, I suppose. That car better be back here by noon tomorrow. There's going to be fireworks. All right, Gillis, you've got five minutes. What's your story about? I'm over a barrel. I need a job. I haven't got a thing. Any kind of an assignment. Additional dialogue. There's nothing. So you need $300. Of course I could give you $300. Only I'm not going to. If I lose my car, it's like having my legs cut off. Greatest thing that could happen to you. Now you'll have to sit behind the typewriter. Now you'll have to write. Now, if we could sit down for two weeks to get a story... I'm sorry, Miss Schaefer. I've given up writing on spec. But I tell you, this is half sold. As a matter of fact, I've given up writing altogether. I'm sorry to bother you again, but I've confirmed the number. I must speak to Mr. Gillis. Nobody here can give you any information. And you will please not call again. You see, Mr. DeMille, open the gate. Mr. DeMille is shooting. You got an apartment? Sure, Miss Desmond. Come on, Mac. They can't drive on the lot without a pass. Miss Desmond can. Come on. So remember, wishy-washy goals equals wishy-washy conflict. As Hal Ackerman says, think of it as two jackals fighting over one bone. The beauty of Billy Wilder's screenplays is that when characters want something, things get even more complicated. For example, we start the story with Joe wanting to write, but repo men come for his car. Later, Joe tries to sell a script to Paramount, but Betty tells Sheldrake his story is bad. Joe flees the repo men, but his tire blows out. Joe hides his car in Norma's garage, but is then mistaken for the caretaker. Joe just wants to get his money and get out but Max moves his belongings into the house, and Norma falls in love with him. Joe wants to remain his own person, but Norma showers him with extravagant gifts. Joe wants to escape and stay with Artie, but Norma tries to kill herself. Joe wants to keep his life with Norma a secret, but Betty starts searching for him. And just when Joe doesn't need money anymore, he now has a great story idea. And finally, Joe and Betty fall in love with each other, but now she's engaged to his good friend Artie. And of course, Norma gets in the way. So remember, when writing your scenes, think of how to add complications. Think of the question, what's the worst thing that can happen here? In other words, just ask yourself, what would Billy Wilder do? C. 
Scene agitators are a great way to inject extra conflict into a scene. When characters are in the middle of trying to accomplish something, another character agitates the scene by impeding them. For example, Joe tries to read Norma's screenplay, but Norma watches him, making him uneasy. When the repo men come to take his car away, Joe desperately needs money from Norma. But the situation is made even more tense with Buster Keaton and the other card players present. When Joe needs to use the phone at Artie's place, notice how two women are using it and get in his way. At that same party, Joe wants to talk to Betty in private. So of course, we get this. Hey Joe, I said you could have my couch. I didn't say you could have my girl. Later, Joe runs into Betty and Artie in the drugstore. Betty asks Joe to work with her on the screenplay, and this happens. Mr. Gillis, if you please. Uh, I'll be right there. And finally, Joe talks to Betty at Paramount Studios, and we get the scene agitator. Now the first time they meet... Look, if you don't mind, I haven't time to listen to the whole plot. I'll make it short. I'm sorry, it's your baby now. So if you're looking to add another layer of conflict into your scenes, don't forget about the power of scene agitators. It's no question that Billy Wilder is one of the undisputed masters of dialogue. Although it's certainly a gift that comes naturally to some writers, we can still learn several techniques that Billy Wilder frequently uses in his dialogue. For example, don't let a character answer a simple yes or no. You're a writer, you said. Why? Are you or aren't you? That's what it says on my guild card. Sit down. Is there enough light? I've got 20-20 vision. Another example, build tension by having characters not answer a question. How did you know I was going to stay this afternoon? The bathroom is over there. I'd put in some towels, soap, and a toothbrush. Max, whatever your name is, what are my things doing here? I'm talking to you! You send them. Is that it, Max? I better press your evening clothes, sir. Shoot, come on, let's have a drink. Shouldn't we wait for the others? Max Champagne! Next, use a character's background to flavor their dialogue. For example, Joe is a screenwriter, so notice how he talks like a screenwriter. She turns out to be a multimillionaire and leaves you all her money. That's the trouble with you readers. You know all the plots. You didn't believe me. Now I suppose you don't think I have the courage. Oh, sure, if it would make a good scene. Artie is an assistant director. Notice how that shows in his lines of dialogue. Hey, wait a minute. Go easy on that punch bowl. Budget only calls for three drinks per extra. Fake the rest. Could you write in plenty of background action so they'll need an extra assistant director, huh? Oh, Artie, shut up. And finally, there are the classic witty comebacks that we see in many of Billy Wilder's movies. In other words, use dialogue as verbal sparring. You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures. Used to be big. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. And out came talk. Talk, talk! That's where the popcorn business comes in. You buy yourself a bag and plug up your ears. Who did you borrow that from? Adolf Manju? Close, but no cigar. Don't worry, she's just a fan for my literary output. Hurt feelings department. So do what Billy Wilder does. Treat dialogue as an action. An action that characters take to get what they want, flavored by who they are. So what's your choice for the best written Billy Wilder film? Let me know by leaving a comment below. As always, I want to thank my wonderful patrons for your awesome support on Patreon. You help grow the channel and inspire me to continue making videos for the screenwriting community. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified of upcoming videos from Script Sleuth. More great content is on the way. Thank you so much for watching.